So Taz, I guess just walk through that final sequence when they hit the three to win it. What were you guys trying to do defensively? Um, we knew Ramey was going to try to drive downhill, try to create some type of contact or create a play for somebody else, which he did. Uh, my job on the ball is to try to stay in front of the guy as much as possible and force a tough shot. He created help and uh, caked it out to open open shooter. And we we talked about the game plan, not to give him step in threes. And Andrew Jones, he made four, five step in threes today, and uh, he made a big shot when it was uh, when they needed one. Go ahead, Kevin Kinder. Tess, what did they do well, allow them to get to the basket so well? It looked like they had a ton of straight line drives, like their first seven, eight shots were either right at the rim or dunks. Uh, they ran this action, this little ghost screen action to where it's like, it's a slip screen and they do it all the time. So the way we guard our ball screens kind of contradicted what they was doing on offense. And uh, they allowed for some offensive drives. And I feel like we did a good job at a certain you know, a point in the game of uh, where we were stopping that and rotating out to the to shooters and tagging shooters and the roll man. And uh yeah, they just they kept using those ghost screens and little fake screens to get downhill with their guards and they're they the guards are really good at finishing and also really good at passing out to good shooters. Next is Ryan Pritt. Hey Taz, uh, they put five guys in double figures a day and that's pretty normal for them. How much does that balance how much more difficult does it make that make to defend that when you know if you leave a guy, he's just as capable of beating you as anybody else is? Well, it's hard to guard a team that has five capable scores on on the team at, or on the floor at one time. Uh, you know, because you have to be accountable for everyone. You know, you, you can't put your let per se your weakest defender on one of their players because there's really no weak offensive player on the court at the time. Uh, they don't know they they do a good job of moving the ball and finding what their guys do best and put them in the spots to where they can do the best at. And uh, they, they showed it, you know, Matt Coleman coming off ball screens downhill, getting to the lane with floaters and kicking out. Same thing with Ramey, uh, creating ISO, you know, a uh, place for him to get downhill and then kick it out to uh, Andrew and just pushing the ball in transition. So, yeah, their, their player style allows them to have a lot of people in double figures and, you know, their, their style works. Justin Jackson, you're next. Hey, Taz. Um, the game of basketball is 40 minutes long. A lot of people can look at those missed free throws at the end and, and point to that. But it, it, there's a lot more that goes in, in, into this game uh, than that, isn't there? Yes. Uh, we can say, yeah, he missed two free throws, whatever. Yet You got to talk about him getting an offensive rebound. You got to talk about me not getting a stop to, to play before that. So it's it's a lot of plays that lead up into the end of the game being the close game. It's not just on one specific play. Uh, we had a lot of defensive breakdowns and a, a lot of offensive, like, just breakdowns as well. And we wasn't moving that with my offense like, sometimes. And uh, our defense picked up a little bit in the second half and we was, you know, making them turn the ball over and, like, force up tough shots. But so it's not on, it's not just one play that changes the game. It's a, a, a multitude of plays. It's a, an array of plays that changed the game. So for all the people that just wants to say it's on one play, it's just not the case. Any other questions for Taz? Okay, Taz, thanks for joining us.